We'll now link up the review page with a database and we'll be using the SQL Lite database and the SQF Lite package will help us do that. So first step is we'll copy the dependency, paste this in the pubspec file. We're also going to use the path package which will help save the database at the correct location on the device. So we'll copy the dependency and paste that in too and run pubget. Now we have an error here related to the current version of the path package. So I'm just going to bump this down to point 0.1 and run pubget again. And now we're good to go. So the first step is we'll create a database manager class and we're going to pop this in its own directory. We'll name this databases and a new Dart file, database manager. In this new file, we'll create a class, database manager. So as the name suggests, this will be responsible for everything to do with the database. So therefore it makes sense that we only ever have one instance of database manager. So to make sure that's the case, we'll implement the singleton pattern on this class. So the first step is we'll create a private constructor. We'll name this internal. So we're making it a private constructor by prefixing the name with an underscore. So it also must be a name constructor. So by making this constructor private, we can only call it from within database manager. We'll also create a static final variable. We'll name this instance. This will also be private and we'll set this to the private constructor. And lastly, we'll create a factory constructor and this will return the instance. So the private constructor will be the constructor that actually creates the single instance of database manager. The factory constructor is going to act as our public default constructor, but it won't actually create the instance, it will just return an instance. So the first time the factory constructor is called, the internal constructor will run, it will generate the only instance of database manager and the factory will return that. And any other subsequent times the factory runs, it will just return that existing cached instance. So therefore, we'll only ever get the same instance of database manager. So now that we have the singleton out of the way, we'll just make some comments here to say singleton, and now we can look at the database code. So now we'll set up some variables. These will all be final and of type string. The first one will represent the database file name. We'll name this flashcards and just write .db for database. The next one will be the table in this database. We'll name this words. And this table will have four columns, topic, English, character, and pinyin. So let's set up a variable for each of those. All right, now that we have the variables done, let's set up some methods. So the first one will be to initialize the database. So init database. And all of the methods will be asynchronous. So we'll use the async keyword. So now we want to get the location on the device for where the database file will be stored. To do that, we can use the get databases path method. And this comes from the SQF Lite package. And we'll return the result in a string. So we'll name this devices path. And this will return as a future. So we'll use the await keyword. We now want to join devices path with the database file name to create the full path for the database. So to join them together, we can use the join method, and this comes from the path package we imported. We need to pass in the devices path and join that with the file name, so database. And we'll store this in a variable path. Okay, so now that we have that done, we want to open the database. So we use the open database method from SQF Lite. We want to pass in the path and that is done. Now the first time we want to open a database at that path, it won't yet exist. So we're given a property on create. So a database will be created at that path with the file name and a callback will run. We'll call execute on the variable and then we can enter in SQL to create the table. So to create the table, we'll write create table. Now we want to enter in the table name. So we'll pass in that variable table and then brackets. So in these brackets, we can set up the four columns, which will just be these four columns here. So firstly, we write in the column name, and these will all be text. All right, and we also don't want any duplicate rows. So what we can do is we can apply a constraint on column two. That's the English column. So to do that, we'll set up a primary key. 
which means we can restrict any duplicate rows based off column two. And column two makes sense because each English word will be different, but column one will have repeating values with the topic. And now for on create to run, we also need to set the version. So we can select the version property and pass in one. And the very last thing is we want to return the database from this method. So this will return a database. This will return as a future. So right click return as a future and return await. And I just need to add text on the last column there. Okay, so now let's set up the next method and that'll be to insert into the database. So insert word, we want to take in the word we're going to insert. And again, add the async keyword and import the library for the model class. The first step is to get a reference to the database. So we can call the method init database, store this in a variable. So we have two ways to insert. We can select raw insert and type in a SQL statement, or we can use a helper method insert. So both will do the same thing. Let's select the helper method. First, we need to pass in the table, and now we'll pass in the word. Now there's an error here because we can't directly pass in a word object. We need to pass this in as a map. So what we can do is we can go to the model class and we'll create a method that'll convert this word object into a map. So we'll name this to map and we want to return a map. The key will be of type string and the value will be of type dynamic. So return and then we'll use the curly braces for a map. So let's set up the key value pairs. The first will be topic and the value will be the value we've stored in the topic variable. And we'll do this for the other variables. Okay, so now we have a way to turn this word object into a map. Back to the database manager, we can now easily just call to map, and that is done. So each map will correspond to a row in the table. Now here we have a primary key on column two. So if we do have a conflict with the same value, we can set conflict algorithm to replace. So we'll replace the existing row with this new row, so effectively just avoid any duplicates. And lastly, we'll add the await keyword, and we don't need to return anything from this method, so we'll just return a future void. Okay, so now we can insert into the database, let's select from the database. So select words. Firstly, get a reference to the database, paste that in. And again, we've got two ways to query the database. We can use raw query and write in SQL, or the helper method query. So again, we'll select the helper method and we'll pass in the table. Now, just as we insert a map into the table, we'll get back a list of map. So we'll get back all of the rows in the table. So we'll set up the return type. This will be a list of map. We need to write this in explicitly and we'll save this in a variable named maps and we'll await this. So we get back a list of map, but we actually want a list of word. So if we jump back to the model class, we want to do the reverse operation here. So what we can do is we can set up a factory. We'll make this a named factory from map. We'll pass in the map. We're going to convert into a word. We'll name this map. And with the factory, we can use the return keyword and we want to return a word. And now we can initialize all of the values in this word object. And we'll get the value by passing in the key. So this will be topic. And we'll do the same for these other parameters here. So now we have a way to turn a map back into a word. We want to return that back in a list of word. So to help us do that, we can use the generate constructor on the list class. So we can use this constructor to cycle through all of the entries in the maps and for each one, convert it back to a word. So first of all, we'll pass in the length. So this will be maps.length and we have an index. So this will run from zero up until how many entries we have in the maps variable. And for each time we loop through, we want to return a word. So we can use the from map constructor we just created. We need to pass in the map so we can write maps 
and at the index that we're given. And lastly, we want to return this from the method. So therefore, we'll return a list of word, and this will return as a future, so wrap that in a future, and add the return keyword. Now also, we may want to only select some rows from this table, so let's set up a way to do that. So we can create a variable, we'll put this in the curly brackets, so therefore it's an optional parameter. This will be of type int, a nullable type, and we'll name this limit. We can then use the limit property and pass in limit. So if we pass in nothing, because this is optional, we'll just return everything in the table. Otherwise, if we want to draw out, let's say, five words, we'll pass in five. And because we can select a limited number of words now, we should also randomize the selection. So to do that, we can use the order by property, we'll type in random with brackets. Okay, so now we can select from the table. We also want to remove from the table. Let's set up a method remove word. We need to take in the word that we want to remove. On here, we can use the delete helper method, pass in the table, and for the where property, we can type in the SQL code to remove a single row from the table. So we'll type in English equals question mark, and then for the where arguments, the where args, we'll type in word.english. So this is saying where English equals the question mark, this question mark is a placeholder for the value we pass into where args. So if English equals this value that we pass into where args, we'll remove that row from the table. And lastly, we'll add the await keyword, and we don't want to return anything from this method, so we'll set the return type as a future void. And next up, we'll create a very similar method. We'll name this remove all words. So this is going to remove all of the words in the table, so we don't need to pass in anything. And we can just remove these arguments here. So we just delete all the rows in the table. And finally, we'll create a method that deletes the database file. So remove database, add the async keyword. So to remove the database, we first need to get the path for the database file. So copy these two lines of code in the init database method, paste them here. We'll select delete database from the SQF Lite package. We need to pass in the path, so that's passed in. Add the await keyword. And again, we don't need to return a value, so future void. Okay, cool. So now that we have this set up, let's actually get it doing something with the app. So next we'll create a button so we can insert a word into the database, and we'll have this review page set up so when we open it, it'll display all of the entries from the database via this animated list. Yeah.